Seiko Sewa Guego, Sarah Young Yet. I'm a first year student at the Ungoy Hawaii Midwives Collective Apprenticeship Program. I've created a quick PowerPoint presentation on the developmental aspects of the respiratory system. In the fetus, the lungs are filled with fluid and all respiratory exchanges are made by the placenta. Respiratory development in the embryo begins around week 4. At the beginning of week 13, the fetus now has all major lung structures involved in the airway. The major milestone of respiratory development occurs around week 28, when sufficient alveolar precursors have matured so that a baby born prematurely at this time can usually breathe on its own. At birth, the fluid-filled pathways are drained and the respiratory passageways are filled with air. The alveoli inflate and begin to function in gas exchange, but the lungs are not fully inflated for two weeks. Surfactant lowers the surface tension of the film of water lining each alveolar sac so that the alveoli don't collapse between each breath. Surfactant is not usually present in large enough amounts to accomplish this until late in pregnancy. If it's who are born prematurely or in whom surfactant production is inadequate for other reasons, example, diabetic mother, have infant respiratory distress syndrome, IRDS. These infants have dyspia. Within a few hours after birth, they use tremendous amounts of energy just to keep inflating their alveolar, which collapse after each breath. Although IRDS is still accountable for over 200,000 newborn deaths a year, many of these babies will survive now because of the current use of equipment that supplies a positive pressure continuously and keeps the alveoli open and working in gas exchange until the maturing lungs produce adequate amounts of surfactant. Cystic fibrosis, the most common lethal genetic disease in the U.S., strikes one out of every 2,400 births, and every day two children die of it. CF causes oversecretion of a thick mus mucus that clogs the respiratory passages and puts the child at risk for fatal respiratory infections. The respiratory rate is highest in newborns, about 40 to 80 breaths per minute. It continues to drop throughout life. In the infant, it goes around to 80 BPM. At 5 years old, it's around 25 BPM, and in adults, it is 12 to 18 per minute. However, the rate often increases again at old age. The lungs continue to mature throughout childhood, and more alveoli are formed until young adulthood. But in people who begin smoking during the early teens, the lung never completely matures, and those additional alveoli are lost forever. Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, or SIDS, sometimes called crib death, claim many newborn infants. Although the causes are unknown, it appears that SIDS might be associated with defects in the portion of an infant's brain that controls breathing and arousal from sleep. Researchers have discovered some factors that might put babies at extra risk. There are also identified measures you can take to help prevent your child from SIDS. Perhaps the most important is placing your baby on its back to sleep. Except for sneezes or coughs and the occasional common cold that block the upper respiratory passageways with mucus, the respiratory system works so efficiently and smoothly that we are not even aware of it. Asthma is a condition in which your airways narrow and swell and produce extra mucus. This can make breathing difficulty and trigger coughing, sneezing, and shortness of breath. For some people, asthma is a minor nuisance. For others, it can be a major problem that interferes with daily activities and may lead to a life-threatening asthma attack. Asthma can't be cured, but its symptoms can be controlled because asthma often changes over time. It's important that you work with your doctor to track your signs and symptoms and adjust treatment as needed. According to The Who, in 2015, lower respiratory infections were the third deadliest disease. A lower respiratory infection is an infection in your airways and lungs. It can be due to the flu, pneumonia, bronchitis, and tuberculosis. The fourth deadliest is chronic obstruction pulmonary disease. The fifth deadliest is respiratory cancers like trachea, bronchitis, and lung cancer. And then tuberculosis is the ninth deadliest. About 35% of HIV-related deaths are due to TB. As we age, the chest wall becomes more rigid and the lungs begin to lose their elasticity, resulting in slower decreasing ability to ventilate the lungs. Vital capacity decreases by one-third by the age of 70. In addition, blood oxygen levels decrease and sensitivity to stimulating effects of carbon dioxide decreases, particularly in a reclining or supine position. As a result, many elders tend to become hypoxic during sleep, exhibiting sleep 
apnea. Additionally, as we age, the respiratory system's protective mechanisms also become less efficient with age. Cellular activity of the mucosa decreases and phagocytes in the lungs become sluggish. The net result is that elderly population is more at risk for respiratory tract infections, particularly pneumonia and the flu. Most of the information I got for this presentation is from my textbook, Essentials of Human Anatomy and Physiology, 9th edition, and the Mayo Clinic website and other websites. Now for watching, Ona. Oh, no.